Right then, it's finally time to test the golden 1900K on liquid nitrogen. This week I went out and bought a few dozen liters of LN2 to play with and uh, I've already been doing quick uh, pre-tests on both of these boards to see uh, how high voltages the CPU requires to run uh, uh, the maximum temperatures of liquid nitrogen, which is as close to minus 196 as possible. And uh, I can al already confirm that the old ASRock Z170M OC formula cannot reach as high uh, multi-core core speeds compared to a new uh, Z390 model. So uh, even though the old ASRock board here got a slightly better V-core requirement score on water, it will uh, uh, stay behind the newer boards when it comes to really uh, uh, high-speed uh, multi-core benchmarking on LN2 when the CPU is pulling uh, 400 to 500 watts and even beyond that. And uh, I, I was already have I was also having uh, some uh, issues with my power supply, as the uh, older Ashrock board only supports a single 8-pin to power the CPU. My uh, closer HX1200i, or it could be any uh, modern PSU, uh, has, has both a single and multi-rail uh, mode uh, on paper. But even when it's set to single uh, rail mode, there's this stupid 40 amp current limit per connector. And uh, that means I cannot run the best possible uh, multi-core speeds on this board with that power supply, since uh, when I try to run, let's say, uh, 6.8 to 6.9 GHz Cinebench with uh, 1.7 set V-Core, the power supply will shut down immediately. So uh, that tells us that the CPU is already pulling 500 watts at that point, since uh, 40 amps at, with 12 volts is already 480 watts. So uh, we will be using the uh, EVGA Z390 Dark here to run uh, the best possible results now when we go all out on LN2. Uh, you can see I will be running the VRM uh, area totally naked again as before since uh, when we cool down the CPU the uh, cold from the CPU pot will be extracted to the PCB itself and the uh, frozen PCB or printed circuit board will help down to cool down the MOSFETs while we run the uh, benchmarks. And uh, after all, uh, the tests we run do not last that long anyways. So we are not running like hours and hours of Prime95. We just run Cinebench, XTU, X265, W Prime, and those run from a few seconds to let's say uh, two minutes max. So it's not really a long duration. And uh, you can also see I will be using small heatsink on the chipset itself, aka PCH. This is not uh, entirely necessary, but I want to have uh, some heatsink on it, as uh, the chipset itself is quite small, uh, but it doesn't uh, use that much power, so it's not really uh, it's not really something that you should have to worry about. And uh, we will be using the uh, Kimping cooling in Feno backplate again. We are uh, from a secondary power supply, so if we have a uh, some issues and we troubleshoot or change parts, we can still uh, have this uh, continuously on and we can make sure that the condensation does not uh, expand from the socket area itself. You can see that the uh, original thermal part is a bit molested <laughs> since it's still uh, the original one I put on the uh, back plate almost two years ago. So you can see that it has been used, but it still works. So yeah it's fine we will also be using uh, Kimping cooling uh, KPX thermal paste on the CPU as always and uh, yeah it will be it will be interesting to see if we can take down any records currently most of the 9900k uh, top scores are held by Asus ROG team when they used uh, liquid helium at the start of October this year so they are holding the record in Cinebench R15, 11.5, Geekbench 3, XTU, uh, X265, 4K, PiFast, SuperY, 1M, GPU Pi. So uh, let's see if we can take down any of those scores. 
since uh, if you have been following the computer scene at the high end for years you probably haven't ever seen an EVGA board at the high uh, rankings in a 2D scores so if we manage to break any of those top scores it will be the first time ever for EVGA as well as for me so uh, it will be something really uh, exciting to see but uh, yeah I'm, I'm already certain that the CPU will do 6.9 something on Cinebench and W Prime, and uh, hopefully 7.3 to 7.35 on the single core stuff like PyFast and SuperPy 1M. But yeah, other than that, it's time to start insulating the board, uh, mounting the pot, and starting to cool down and start overclocking. I think I sing it again, she 
my long LM2 session with the EVGA Z390 Dark and the Golden 9900K is now over and the results are pretty freaking amazing over se around 7 GHz for Cinebench near 7.1 for GPU Pi 1 billion which also uses all cores and threads over 6.8 for tests that use uh, AVX like Intel XTU and uh, X265 encoding both at 1080p and 4K and uh, over 6 or uh, over 7.4 for single core tests like PyFast and SuperPy so uh, yeah I'm stunned <laughs> the board is so awesome it can run uh, close to 4200 uh, memories with uh, 12 11 11 and also I was running the uh, VRM naked the whole uh, session and the hardest temperatures I saw were around 65 during the uh, X265 encoding at the end of the test but I was all, I was using a strong fan uh, blowing at them so uh, it was enough and the power consumption was well over 500 watts so <sighs> yeah 500 watts is a very insane uh, number for mainstream socket but hey that's the beauty of this buffer board so yeah think carefully where, which board you choose uh, to select for your new uh, 8 core coffee lake rig <laughs> thanks for watching and see you